get this party started. It's Rivalry Sunday, and this is our East Coast Showdown. One specific play that really shocked me was the snipe on Piccadilly. Oh, oh my goodness. This is not gonna be free. Hey, what's up, what's up, I'm Swag, and welcome to Exploring Esports. Today we are in Minneapolis for the first ever CDL event, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to see the matches. A lot of people don't know that Call of Duty actually has a pro side. A lot of people think it's just all about just playing public matches, but they actually have a competitive side where there's actual pro players. I'm a Call of Duty content creator, been doing it for eight years, over 2,000 videos. If you're seeing this video, I'm probably live on Twitch right now, guys. Link's gonna be in the description. Come over and hang out with me, guys. Oh! Growing up, I really didn't play that many video games coming up through middle school, and, and then in that transition where my friend introduced me to Call of Duty, and I just became addicted to it. I would wake up two hours before school to play Call of Duty just to get better. And then I started dabbling into videos, and that's when I started creating content in Black Ops 2, and I've been doing it ever since. Yeah, Armory is where we're having the event. Uh, it's been cool. Like I said, I've met a lot of people who actually watch my content as well, even though this is a pro event. Everyone here is passionate about Call of Duty. And to have people actually come up to me and recognize like my content, you know, that's probably my favorite part of the whole thing of doing this is just, you know, them showing love and me showing love back. You can see I watch all of your freaking videos. Like, if it wasn't for you and watching your game and stuff, I would never learn how to get to do it. Show them all, man. Hey, nice to meet you, bro. And one of the biggest questions over the years of me actually playing is, you know, what controller do I use? So right now, we're actually going to head down to the Scuff booth when man Alex down there he's gonna explain to you guys how scuff works and everything that goes into actually having a scuff controller. So man Alex here is gonna tell you guys about how scuff actually makes a difference from a regular PS4 controller to a scuff controller. When you hold the controller you're only using two fingers right you're using your thumbs to press the buttons and move the triggers and then your, your index finger to actually press the triggers. You have three fingers in the back that weren't being used for anything and with these paddles in the back that, that's our biggest differentiator when talking about you know our scuff controllers and it pretty much allows you to leave your thumbs on the thumbsticks without um, having to lift them up to press the buttons. So now you can press the buttons on the back of the controller and always leave your thumbs on the thumbsticks. That slight second where you're lifting your thumbstick to press the button could mean life and death in game. Yeah, in game, in game you could die by just lifting your up because you're not able to look around and do things at the same time. So first of all, with the front of the controller, I definitely use the concave sticks. It's just a better grip for me in a sense with the controller. Uh, one thing is the grip, helpful when my hands get sweaty when you're playing six, seven hours, having that grip is always helpful. And then the way I configure my the back of my scuff, I only use two paddles. Your right is gonna be my jump button, and then this other one right here is gonna be my slide button. And that's how I use for Call of Duty. I've used that since six, seven years. I've always used the same configuration, so. The team I'm really looking closely, uh, following their storyline, has to be the New York Subliners. I have a couple close friends, uh, Tad and Zoom on there, and I can't wait to see what they do this weekend. So what do you guys think about the uh, COD World League? I know like it was a lot of just organizations, but now with how much money's invested into it, what do you guys think about it? CDL could be like the biggest eSport in the next few years, so hopefully it keeps on growing, it keeps getting bigger. I think I speak for all these guys too. We all feel the same exact way. We, we dedicated our whole lives to this, and we just want to see this thing do as good as it can. And he's in, and he's managed to make it through. Wonderful kill on a rated, and the back line though will stay safe. Zuma trying to bounce back. This is a solid hold from the subliners. This is what New York wanted to see, but it's not over yet. So I kind of want to ask, man, who is the biggest rivalry you guys have right now? I'm probably going to say FaZe. FaZe? Okay. Yeah. Three of us beat off FaZe. We won FaZe all the championships. Okay. Or Sensor, Tommy and I. We a little rivalry there. So you guys have one more match left, correct? Are you guys in a plan? New York, uh, New York Subliners. Yeah. New York Subliners. How are you guys going into that match and uh, what are you expecting? Me and Ansel are both team with Zuma and Attached. So I think they're going to be going hard. They're going to want to beat us. Uh, but I think that's going to make us want to even go harder. I don't think the Subliners have a chance in our match this afternoon. Yeah, so I'm excited to see this next matchup because it's New York Subliners versus Atlanta FaZe. And actually, Attach and Zuma used to be on FaZe, who are on the New York Subliners now, for about four or five years to see that head-to-head -head and that kind of rivalry. Because if they actually win this match, this would be a huge confidence boost because everyone is saying Atlanta FaZe is the best team. It's 
It's been about a 50-50 split, but inside the hill for the most part, FaZe has been hanging out, racking up the kills. If the subliners can't put something together to break this P2 hill, it's going to start to get out of control. And those are two great back-to-back -back kills for the subliners. Again, the pressure was put on them. They have come up big both times, but this is a non-stop pressure-having game. But now you actually have a Tash going on a 5 spree. You got to make the mad dash for the contest, but easy gunfights for FaZe to win. 250 on the board in FaZe. Up one to nothing. As we watch the match right now, um, unfortunately, the New York subliners are not doing very well. But like I said, they have great players. They have great history. So, I, I mean, I'm sure they'll bounce back. Massive man advantage. Range Maniac gets the kill. Priesta gets the next two. It is easy. The subliners just look clueless on the map. There was not a single moment where I thought the subliners had any glimmer of hope. Unfortunately, uh, the subliners did not uh, beat FaZe. Uh, FaZe is probably the best team in this league right now, so I understand they have veteran guys. I know they can easily bring it back and have some time to work on it in scrims. Kind of want to talk to you guys about like what were you guys thinking like uh, before the match? Like how, what was your mindset going into it, the game plan and stuff like that? We're just going over S and D in depth on every map. I feel like we put ourselves on a disadvantage playing a map that we thought we could just go in and play well, but that was not the case. We lost it both times. Our respawn definitely needs some work too, so we're gonna be grinding the respawns. We don't have that much time before London, but uh, we're definitely gonna need to go back to the war room and strategize for that. Lastly, I wanna say thank you Call of Duty League for having me here. It was a great opportunity, I mean, to see the CDL formed and be here for the first event. The matches are gonna be intense all throughout the year, and make sure you guys like and subscribe to Whistle, and uh, yeah, come check me out on my YouTube channel, Swag.